Yeah, it look like we good. Okay, okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Hey, friend, welcome to another night of me just kind of personally chopping it up with my Facebook friends. Um, this is episode two. This is week two. If you new to this, we do this every Thursday night at 7 p.m. So if you're watching around this time, this is around the time that it's going to happen. Okay, it's going to be about 10 to 15 minutes. I'm trying to make it 10 to 15 minutes. But, um, you know, sooner or later, we're going to open it up for comments and stuff like that. Uh, speaking of comments, I should be able to see you guys' comments in real time, uh, give or take 10 seconds. But um, I should see it as I'm talking. Um, and if it's, you know, something that I can answer right away, I'll answer it right away. If not, I'll answer it more towards the end. I'll keep a look. All right, tonight we are going to talk about establishing rules for spending your money. And I know you heard this and probably want to click off, but don't click off just yet, okay? Uh, I just want to tell you guys that as a finance coach, I do um, talk about personal uh, finance, uh, good personal finance habits, and I also talk about some good uh, saving habits, but I do encourage people uh, that I teach to spend whatever they like. Spend whatever it is that you want on whatever you like, as long as you care about it, okay? I don't want you to have buyer's remorse. I want it to have some sort of value, okay? But with great response, or <laughs> with great freedom comes great responsibility, okay? So, and I say that because I'm someone that really likes to spend money. Like, let me tell you guys, I spend money like Congress, as Dave Ramsey would say. And I want you guys to know I'm an avid Dave Ramsey uh, follower, so you guys are going to hear me talk about him a lot. Um, but, you know, so I'm not one to point fingers, and I'm not one to say stop spending money, okay? If you look around, as a matter of fact, everybody spends money. So, you know, who am I to tell you what to do with your money? It's called personal finance. It's, you know, as long as you can make it, work for you, and as long as you put some rules in place uh, f so that you don't go overboard, um, you'll be fine. And I want to teach you about two of those tonight that I personally use in my everyday life, okay? Um, let's get it started. If you look around, though, oh, says she can barely hear me. Hold on. That means I need to turn my mic up. Uh... How about now, Liz? Can you hear me? I'm so glad the comment thing is working. Let's see if we can be heard. Okay, cool. I just need to turn my mic up, I guess. All right. <laughs> All that mic check. Uh, okay, but if you look around, though, it's hard for us not to spend because everywhere we turn, we're being sold to, okay? You got YouTube ads, you got billboards, you got Facebook ads, you got IG ads, you know, the way that they stock things in the supermarket stores and in Walmart and Target, the way that they shelf things, you're being sold to all of the time. So it's kind of hard not to get tempted to want to buy things, okay? But, um, you know, what's crazy is, what's worse about it is they're getting better and better about knowing you more than you know yourself. If you ever wondered, you know, you go to a website and then all of a sudden you go on IG and you see that company. And then you go to uh, Facebook and you see that company. You watch YouTube, you get a YouTube ad, all of a sudden this company pops up out of nowhere and all you wanted to do was check out the website. You know, you're being uh, uh, analyzed and targeted and sold to at all times, okay? so. What I'm saying is, as a finance coach, I personally don't teach going against your buying wants, but I do want you to have a couple of procedures in place before you start buying up the world, okay? Um, before we get into it, one fact and one kind of like reminder that I want to put in your head is that just because you have the money don't mean that you should spend it. And that's the power of you know, having money. That's the that's the freedom of having money. It's like knowing that you could buy this if you wanted to, 
but you restrain yourself. That's that's a freedom that not a lot of people possess. So I want you to be able to have that type of freedom. So uh, with that said, number one, you can try to establish what's called the 24 hour rule. OK, and I personally do this myself. I do it for every uh Every purchase that's over $50, if I look at something and I really want it and it's on my mind, right, uh, and I want it right now, I want it, that's called uh, impulse buying, you know, we do that a lot. So if you're in the store and you see something, you're like, oh my God, I really want that. I don't know why I want it, but I want it, right? <laughs> uh, I want you to stop. I want you to stop for a second and I want you to breathe and if it's over $50, you know, you can set your limit, whatever your limit is. But if it's over $50, I want you to take a breather and say, I'll come back tomorrow for this. So what you'll find is when you give yourself time to uh, uh, really think about it and really assess if you want that or not, nine times out of ten, by the time you get home, you it's probably not even going to matter anymore. You're probably going to forget all about it, you know, and... Uh, the reason being is that, uh, like I said, you're being sold to at every point in your life. And part of that selling plays on your emotions. OK, and, uh, buying and spending money is an emotional uh, uh, trigger. It's an emotional habit. So, you know, regardless of what you spend money on, you spend money out of emotion. It's never logic. It's usually never logic. OK, so I want you to understand that if you see something for the first time or you see something and you really want to buy it just just know that you're buying with emotion and later on trying to justify it with logic so just give yourself 24 hours uh uh you know come back and if you still want it then by all means go for it now you might be saying to me well what about when things go on sale what about when they have a limited time only sale let me tell you that is another habit. That is another uh, uh, tactic that they use to sell to you. It's the scarcity tactic, okay? They want you to feel like you're going to miss out on this if you don't get this on sale. Now, I want to ask you a question with that. Did you or did you not have a desire to get this item beforehand, okay? And another thing I want to ask you is will it impact your life in a way by if you bought it for by saving what 10% off if you bought it at that price versus uh uh <laughs> Liz, Liz said they get up with the sales what'd you say yeah yeah mm -hmm. And that's and that's why I want to ask you, will it impact your life? Will it greatly impact your life if you if you didn't have this or if you needed this right away? And but if it but if it but if it but if it is on sale, but if it is on sale, uh, you know, could you buy it if you really needed it? Then I would suggest buying it at full price if it is a necessity or if it's something that you really want. You should have no problem buying it at full price. OK, so, uh, you know, I know that one's kind of like a, oh, man, I don't I don't really know about that one. But trust me, it'll save you a lot of buyer's remorse. OK, I, like I said, that is a sales tactic that they use to get you to buy something quicker and get them out of the red line. Trust me. All right. Uh, another thing I want you to consider and remember is that if something, let's say, is one hundred dollars and you can get it for $80. What I want you to realize is that you don't save $20. You just spent $80 of your money. That's $80 coming out of your pocket going into someone else's pocket. That's $80 of your resources going into uh, the future of somebody else's uh, well-being. So that's what I want you to understand. That's kind of the idea that I'm getting at. OK, uh, and the second rule that I follow um, is, in fact, the five to one rule. All right. Now, this is a very simple rule and you probably even know it. It's basically saying that if you can't afford five of them, you can't afford one of them. 
And that's, you know, excuse me, that's cool and all, but here's my little twist on it. It's like, the reason why I don't fully agree with that is because, like I said, spending and buying things is an emotional decision. So we buy with emotion and then we spend, uh, then we justify with logic later on in life. So, you know, the five to one rule doesn't really matter if it's something that you, you know, impulsively buying because it's like, hey, you know, I might can't afford five, but I can get this one right now and we'll figure it out later. You know, I've done that many times in my life. And granted, that is a very wonderful rule to live by. But I kind of have a different twist on it. OK, um, here's my idea of the five to one ratio. I still do the five to one ratio. So I go through these three criteria, criterion, criterias. I don't know what the plural of criteria is, but after I've waited for 24 hours, I've decided if I can decide that I can buy five of them. Here's another. Here's the last thing that I do. I say for every dollar that I spend, okay, I want to invest. I'm sorry. For every five dollars that I spend, this is the five to one still. So for every five dollars that I spend, I want to put one dollar into an asset. So if you spend five dollars on a purchase, uh, my bad. If you spend twenty dollars on a purchase, you're going to be putting back four dollars for your investment. OK, and that can be anything that you want to invest in or anything. You know, uh, one thing that I tell people, uh, tell my friend, she likes to buy Starbucks. So I would say, you know, for every cup of coffee that you buy, for every five dollar cup of coffee, I want you to put one dollar into the Starbucks company. OK, so that's pretty much how I go about spending when I spend uh, impulsively and things like that. And uh, believe me, it racks up very fast. It racks up extremely fast. OK, <laughs> uh, so so. Um, it's basically why I love this is because it's basically like having your cake and eating it too. So most people that know me, you guys know, I, you know, uh, most people that know me know that I love food. I love to spend money. Right. And I'm very lazy. Right. So <laughs> if you've ever worked with me, you know how far the extent of my laziness goes. Okay. I will have a car. I have a car and still get food delivered to me. That's ultimate level lazy. But <laughs> so so I'm all about, you know, I'm all about the belief that I want to have my cake and eat it, too. I, I feel like you can do it, you know, because I spent my whole life with people telling me money don't grow on trees. And literally, you know, they print money out of thin air. It's like, hey, if that's a thing. I'm wondering if I could have my cake and eat it too. I'm not sitting here thinking like that, but you get my point. <laughs> uh, but no, no, you can, uh, you know, you can even go as radical once you get into it. Um, and Liz, I will definitely be talking about investment strategies. I don't personally go deep into investment strategies because that's something I'm still learning, but I do have an investment portfolio that I stick to is not sexy. So, you know, when, when, you know, when I get to talk about it, I want to tell you about some tricks and tips and things like that. So I don't know why Stevie wondered just now, but it is what it is, but I get very radical. Excuse me. Oh man. I get very radical now about my money. Okay. So now for every dollar that I spend, uh, on an impulse purchase, um, I put $5 into an asset. Okay. And investing, um, I'm just going to throw this out here. Just a little side note. Investing doesn't mean just investing in the stock market. Okay. Um, so Liz, to answer your question, the first place that I would invest in is education. So buying some books, you know, taking up a few courses or listening to a few courses. That's pretty much the first investment that I've that I ever made before I thought about putting my money into something uh, and not getting no money into it from it because I've tried pretty much almost every investment strategy that 
a low level consumer could do or a low level investor could do. And because of my lack of knowledge, it just never worked out for me. So I found a strategy um, that works for me. My portfolio looks good. But, um, you know, so I would definitely say invest in education. The first thing that I would do so you could buy buy something for five dollars and then put a dollar towards, you know, buying a book or something. Um, it will really help you decipher what is important in your life. OK, what you really value, because I want you to spend money now. Don't get it twisted. I want you to spend money because you don't work to pay bills. That is my absolute belief. You don't work to pay bills. I'm going to look at you when I say it. You don't work to pay bills. Okay. You work to enjoy the quality of life. Okay. Granted, the more money you have, the better quality of life you can enjoy. But that does not mean that because you make minimum wage or you make less than desirable income that you can't enjoy the quality of life. All right. I just want you to enjoy the quality of life within your means. All right. Uh, with that said, I do want you to spend money, but definitely take a hold or take heed to uh, some of these strategies, to uh, these two strategies, um, and definitely come up with a financial system. And if you don't know where to start in your financial system, you're in luck because I have a free guide that I just want to give you. OK, nothing attached to it. Nothing, nothing, you know, not trying to upsell you on anything. It is my belief that. Uh, personal finance should be something that should be taught to especially the American people because we are in uh, a crazy time right now. OK, we are probably in. I wouldn't even say the worst I because I can't compare, but this time we're living in is very crazy. So, you know, in this time, I want to step out and show the world that, hey, we can get through this. And I know. You know, and I know we can get through this because time and history have shown us that we are amazing people. We just sometimes need somebody to get us there. OK, and I want to be that person that gets you there. Uh, in other words, uh, I want to <laughs> she said crazy time and in debt. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Trust me, Liz. Um, I am in debt myself. I still have some debts that I pay for to this day. OK, but, um, you know, I am working towards it. And that's why I'm like, hey, guys, I've I've taken the arrows in my back. I've done a lot of crazy things when it comes to money. OK, I've done a lot of crazy things to impress people <laughs> when it comes to money. But, um, you know, so in this time, I want to kind of encourage you guys, but I want to give you somewhere to start. So that's somewhere to start is my free guide. It's called New Money Mindset, okay? I want you to download it. I want you to take heed to it. And if you have any other questions, you know, you can feel free to reach out to me, you know, if something is unclear. Um, and like I said, we're going to do this every single Thursday night. I'm more confident about it. I'm going to jump off in a little bit because I do got to make a trip to South Carolina in the morning. Uh, so I need to be well rested. But you know, definitely download the guide. I didn't tell you guys where to go. It's financialcoachizzy.com forward slash NMM. That's financialcoachizzy.com forward slash NMM. It's a free guide. Like I said, all I need is an email address, a perfect email address for me to send it to, and it'll be in your inbox, okay? I really want you guys to take heed of this, uh, and I want you to tune in next week. Because um, we're going to go off topic. Um, I said put the link in the comics. We're going to go off of the topic of finance because we need to be learning everything around uh, behavior and finance that will ultimately help us uh, become better at our finances. So next week, we're not going to talk about finances, but it's going to be a very good, uh, uh, pretty much subject that I want to cover. So I'm going to put this in here. Um, oh, I can't reply. Okay, let me just hop on Facebook really fast. Drop this link in here. Um, okay, so the link to get it is www.financialcoach. 
izzy.com forward slash n m m okay and it'll be sent directly to your inbox you do you might have to check out your uh promotions tab i am definitely uh i'm not spam and i will never spam you however my website address in perfect transparency i do have all of the requirements necessary uh to run a secure site but my website is fairly new so all of my emails tend to end up in the promotions tab so if it does end up in promotions it's not because it's spam it's because my domain name is really really new and email your email client is definitely cracking down on like new things uh new domains so give it about another month or so and i should be there i'm getting sidetracked but um that's the two things that i want to uh share with you guys is <clears throat> to establish the 24 hour rule and the five to one rule okay so yes <laughs> this video will be reposted on my youtube channel also check that out i do have a video that i posted yesterday it is the power of management so um i do go into financial management into that but um definitely check that out that talks about management in the three key areas of your life uh but with that said i'm not gonna drag this video any longer because i said 15 minutes and it's now 22 minutes uh i love to talk about finance guys but <laughs> uh but i'll see you guys next thursday and as always Thanks for watching. I've been your virtual mentor. And until next time, peace. Yeah.